Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Jesus is Lord of all, praise God. Yes, he's even Lord on Monday morning, glory to God. You say, well, Pastor Craig, what if, you, do you know what I'm going through this morning? Yes, 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 I, I do as far as the person that's inside of me. He knows exactly what you're going through, praise God. And guess what? He's not only inside me, he's also inside you this morning. And, and you know what? He knows exactly what you're going through, what you've been through, praise God. But this is another thing he knows. He knows you are more than a conqueror. Welcome, Mary. Welcome, Frankie. Praise God. Welcome this morning. I know you all had a great weekend this morning. Welcome, Melva. Praise the name of Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is doing some good things. Let me tell you something. This is going to be a great week. Uh, you know why? Number one, because this is the day the Lord has made. And anytime he made it and he ordained it, that means he got plans for your life already put in place that he ordained before you were born. Praise God. So, so nothing that you and I face this morning is a secret or uh, it's taking God by, uh, uh, by, by, you know, by force. I mean, not by force, but by, by surprise. Everything that, that we're, wherever we are right now, praise God, is totally uh, 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 in, in contact with the Spirit of God. So again, thank you so much for being with us this morning. I want to welcome all of you. Maybe if this is your first time, I'm bringing this camera just a little bit more there. Uh, uh, I, I want to welcome all of you that are on with us for the very first time. Uh, you know, my name is Apostle Alfred Craig. Praise God. We are on every morning, Monday through Friday. Praise God. God bless you, Yvette. Welcome. We're on Monday through Friday from... Uh, 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 this is Las Vegas time, 6.30 uh, uh, a.m. every morning, Monday through Friday. Now, if you're in Arizona, that means you're at 7.30 uh, a.m. every morning. And then wherever you are in the nation or the world, praise God, you can look at your your, your, your time zone and, and, and schedule us at that time. But if, Monday through Friday, praise God. Even yesterday, I came on Sunday morning, praise God. I came on Sunday morning, this yesterday morning. I do that as the Lord leads. But yesterday morning, God put in my heart to share with people who think that your age has now discounted you, praise God, from, from all what he's got for your life. I'm telling you, no matter what, what your age is, no matter what you've gone through in your life, you are not discounted, praise God. You know why? Because God has already counted you in, in Jesus' name. God bless you, Bishop Wilson. Welcome today, praise God, men of God. Welcome today. Uh, uh, we're going to be talking about some great things this week. Uh, again, God put in my heart to really focus on prayer between now and the end of the year, to really get our spirit man uh, tuned with him. And things like that. So this week, I'm going to begin by teaching some things uh, each morning at 6.30, 7.30 Arizona time uh, uh, concerning prayer. But I want to start off with some of the elementary aspects of prayer. Because you know how many of the foundation, that your foundation is so important before you begin to build. And many times, we have, we've got way up here. And sometimes people that we're teaching, they never got a good foundation of prayer. And that's why sometimes they get the devil can hijack people's prayer life. Are you following? Because we don't understand the, the the actual foundations of people that's coming in. Don't actually understand the actual foundations of prayer. So we're gonna look at a little bit of that this week. Praise God. And that way, as you begin the prayer, you know uh, the devil cannot no longer hijack your prayer life. Because that's what he desires to do. God bless you, Georgia. Uh, 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 praise God. Welcome this morning. Uh, this morning to our time together. Uh, again, we're talking about that if you don't have a proper found, pr foundation for prayer, then that's how Satan hijacks some of people's prayer life. In other words, you start off really good, and before you know it, things begin to happen in your life. And before you know it, you get busy, and you say, I, mean, I, I didn't get a chance to pray today. And many times that's because you, know, uh, you don't have the proper foundation in that area. See, my foundation in prayer is I cannot not pray. <laughs> you follow me? You know what I mean? I'm going to say it again. My foundation for prayer is I cannot not pray and when you have that foundation then you don't you don't fit prayer into your uh, into your life you prayer is your life It's you know you put everything else around your prayer life you follow me in other words I cannot not eat so I don't so whether I eat every day is not an option for me eating is not something I put it, it, I try to work into my schedule I cannot not eat uh, you follow me drinking water I cannot not drink water, so I so I, I I make sure I arrange everything else around me drinking water. See, so prayer has to be one of those foundational things that is your life that that you that you depend on. Otherwise, Satan can hijack it. 
Are you following? And it's just like if you miss a meal and, and knowing that your body needs that meal, are you following? You'll start sensing some weakness in that area because you're not feeding your physical body that which it needs. Are you following? Well, we need prayer. Are you, we, I'm saying again, we need prayer. Prayer is to our spirit what food is to our physical body. So we need that water. We need that, that refreshing living water. You follow me? So I want to begin to talk about that a little bit today too because that's why, you know, I, like I said, you know, we got to make sure that we're not working prayer into our schedule. You know, uh, and, th and we're not working the Word of God into our schedule. I remember when I was with Apostle Price for a number of years. God bless you, Angie. Uh, Angela, praise God. And, and also, Ife, praise God. Welcome to you also this morning. But uh, I remember years ago, uh, uh, Pastor Price mentioned that he said, "Look, he said you have 24 hours a day. You know, you have to establish priorities in your life, on your family in these 24 hours. You start with 24 hours, and then you put those things in there. Uh, number one, uh, 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 24 hours. I'm gonna. This is what I got to do. This I got to eat. I got to sleep. I got to drink water. I got to spend time with my family. Your father. Then you go from 24 on down." Uh, you're following me. but if you try to have your 24 hours already planned that day and then you begin to figure out now, how can I work prayer into my schedule how can I work, work why can I work you know uh, getting in the Word of God into my schedule now you 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 don't have prayer as a foundational principle and you're trying to work it in so so these are some things we're gonna begin to teach you something because that way by the time 2020 comes praise God the goal is to have us all uh, uh, in, in, in agreement with God as it pertains to our prayer life so he can guide us supernaturally. Amen today. And I'm going to talk about a little bit today that prayer is the supernatural, it's, it's the gate to the supernatural. Let me say it again. Prayer is the gate to the supernatural. Amen. And Satan would lo love to have you and I uh, work, go through our days, you know, uh, uh, with only natural strength. With only natural knowledge, are you following? But prayer is the gateway to the supernatural. Can you see why Satan would try to fight it? Can you see why Satan would try to uh, try to help us try to find time to pray? Are you following? Or make excuses why we don't have time to pray? But you have to. You, it, it's got to be food. Prayer has to be to your your spirit what food is to your body. Are you following those areas? Now they say that breakfast is one of your most important meals. Are you following to get your body working active like in these act? Well, how many know that prayer should be one of your important spiritual meals? Amen. That you do every day. So let's look at that for a moment. Uh, no, notice the book of St. Mark for a moment. You that are online, God bless you. Welcome, Pastor Kevin, there in uh, San Antonio, Texas. Praise God. God bless you, man of God. Uh, God bless you, Williams. What, praise God for you being with us this morning also. But let's look at Mark chapter number 1, verse 35 today. And bless you, Crystal. I see you there. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, Mark to the 1 verse 35. Look at that for a moment, okay? Uh, it says, <clears throat> now this is Jesus. <clears throat> and, and, and you know, I see many books out there <clears throat> that say that, excuse me, <clears throat> this is this morning for me too, praise God. I see many books out there that are saying uh, seven habits of successful people. Are you following me? Well, and that's nothing wrong with that. You know, thank God for a lot of the habits that, that successful people have. But many of them don't have the main one. And that is prayer. But let's see about the most successful person that ever lived. He has sold more books. No, he hasn't sold more books. But more of his books have been sold than any other book ever been. Uh, uh, more, he, his name is on the lips of more people throughout the world and even history since he came on the earth. Uh, and so I think that if I can, if I can locate his habits, glory to God, then and follow his habits. You're talking about being successful. I think we can maximize everything that God tells us to do if we can learn about his habits. And this is a person that God literally sent to the earth to show us him, to to follow his footsteps. He many times said that what you see me do, you do the same thing. The works that I do, you do the same thing. And so I believe that his life then is a testimony and a testament to how we should conduct our lives. So let's look here and let's use Jesus of Nazareth, glory to God, as our object lesson today. Let's use him today. Let's see how, what was one of his main habits? 
what you are, like I said, they said that breakfast is the main is the main meal for the for the body. What did Jesus consider the main thing for him to do before he started his day? Because we want to follow his habits. Mark chapter 1 verse 35 makes this statement. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there he prayed. Isn't that beautiful? So we can see that before he started his day, it said before day, I mean before he started his day, he went out. He separated himself from all the noise. And then it said he went into a solitary place. Everybody needs that solitary place where you can pray. God bless you, Ruby. Welcome today. Everyone needs that solitary place where you and God are there. You know, when I was in ministry school, one of our instructors uh, had such a presence of God on her life that made us students want to know what, what was her secret. She weighed probably 120 pounds, maybe 110 pounds, very small. But when she spoke in our classes, I've seen people that when they speak, you feel the power of God on them their lives. And that was wonderful. I've heard when people speak, you sense God's presence as they speak. But this girl had something on her that was a little different from that. So much so that it made us students. Even though we, our classes was Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. It was something that, uh, that made us students. That whenever she held a class at 1 o'clock after lunch, which was not required. was not required. But almost the whole, the whole student body came back whenever she held those classes. And, 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 and because, because it was something about her. That when she had that, 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 that class at 1 o'clock, it was on prayer. And when she talked about prayer and prayed, it was not like God was with her. It was not like the power of God was upon her. It was like Jesus Christ went and unzipped her and said, daughter, turn around. He unzipped her, stepped inside of her. And it was like God himself. Are you a father? Uh, in, in, uh, in his presence and his power was working through that young girl. It was, it was amazing. And so uh, uh, many, the students kind of asked, what, how did you get to this point? She said, when I was a little girl, I would always go out into a, what we would call a solitary place, by a tree, I guess she was in the country, by a tree. And I would tell the Lord, I would say, Jesus, I don't know that much about you. But, I, but, I, but every morning at this time, I'm going to go over here by this tree. And whatever you want to talk to me about, I'm going to be there to listen. And she said from that point on, she would make that habit of going there every morning by that tree. That was her solitary place. And she would pray and she would listen to God. See, prayer is talking to God. Meditation is hearing God talk to you. And so she, she said that's how over the years... She had that solitary place that she would meet God. And pretty soon as she'd done that, more and more of God began to fill her innermost being. Are you following? And that's what that, that, that was the key to her presence. God bless you, my daughter. Anicia is with me. Praise God. God bless you also. Ruby, welcome, Ruby. Praise God. So we're talking about, about the secret. The prayer then is the gateway to the supernatural. So she had the supernatural God power of God, not just out flowing up on her, not just with her, but it was something emanating from her innermost being. And that's the thing that I'm saying, the foundation of prayer. Are you following me? That I need, I don't just want to pray, I don't just get to pray, I need prayer. Are you following me? I need what prayer does for my spirit. Like I need what Food does for my body and I need what water does to my spirit uh, uh, I, I mean to my body also God bless you Pastor, Pastor uh, Kimberly welcome today so again we're looking at the habit of Jesus the, the first thing he did every morning to about the seven habits maybe we can write a book on the seven habits of Jesus praise God hallelujah 
but we said in Mark 134 in the morning. Thank God for you that doing this in the morning. Rising up. You, sometimes you got to get up. <laughs> Amen. You got to get up in the morning. Praise God. You know, you know, it's hard to let go of that bed sometimes and, and get up. But getting up, it's a rising up. A great while. Glory to Now, isn't it amazing? A great while. That means he took some time. It wasn't just something he just, you know, you know had a five-minute devotion. It said a great while before a day. It says he went into his solitary place. He had that place of prayer. You know, I remember for years ago before I had an office, my place of prayer was in my bathroom. <laughs> You'll follow me. Some people's prayer is in their closet. They put a little place in their closet. You know, it's, it's where you and God can be alone. It's a consecrated place, you know, in those areas where you and God are alone. And it's a place where you can talk to God and he can talk to you uninterrupted. You need that time. Are you following me? Where you and God alone can get together. And then you begin to develop that as a foundation of your life. You got that? So, so, so therefore, prayer, we can say this is, is my definition of prayer then. Prayer then is the Father's, I'm going to read on my, on my, my notes here. Prayer then is the Father's invitation to fellowship with you. In other words, it is, it is, it is God calling us to prayer. I, 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 I'm, you know, like one song says, I miss my time with you. So prayer is the Father's invitation to, uh, uh, to fellowship with you. Prayer is, is his love and his heart hunger for your, com for your companionship as his child. So, you know, so prayer is more than just you and I, again, you know, just, you know, okay, Lord, bless my name. My, my name is Jimmy. I, I take all you give me. Bless be my four no more in Jesus' name. Amen. No, prayer is fellowship with your father. Prayer is the father's cry. Your father's cry to fellowship with you. Glory to God. Amen. In other words, you and I, when we are in prayer, we're at God's throne room. We're breathing, glory to God, his very presence. We're drinking in his strength. And we're drinking in his generous love. And you'll find, look at the book of Revelation for a moment. The book of Revelation, chapter number 3 and verse number 12. Look at how Jesus described the father's heart hunger. You know, whenever, uh, when I was a child, you know, one of the most important meals when family gathered together would be a supper. It is a time when, you know, you get together and you, you enjoy the meal together, but it's the fellowship. How was your day? How was your day? You know, and then like it was a fellowship of the father and his family. Are you a family? Brothers and sisters got together. Well, that's, 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 and so God is using that type of analogy here to show us how important it is to him to pray. So Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man would just hear my voice, hear me call in you to prayer, to fellowship with me. Hallelujah. He says, and will open the door. Open the door. I will come in to him. Oh my God. Like I said to the lady, he, I said that it was like Jesus unzipped her and came in to her. He said, if any man will, will I'm, I'm knocking. I need some people that I can come into. I want to come in you. Glory <laughs> to God. I'm knocking on the door of your heart. Of your busy schedule. Of all the things you have to do every day. I'm knocking. He said, if any man would just let me open the door and put me in your schedule, I will come in and look what he says here and sup with him. That word comes from the word sup, supper or time of fellowship, a time of breaking bread together. Are you following me? So, so prayer is not like just saying, well, I remember when I first got born again, we was in the church. And we, I didn't know how to pray, so they, they said, let's go out and pray. So we said, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That was the only time we knew how to pray. We didn't know much about prayer. So we just said, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord. You know what I mean? And, uh, uh, but uh, prayer is talking to your Father. And meditation is listening to Him talk to you. It is supping with Him. It's fellowshipping with Him. It is His heart 
It's his heart calling you as a father to his children. So let's sup together. Let's not make this a religion. Let's not reduce my time with you to a, uh, a, a devotion, a five-minute devotion. Let's take some time. This, is, this was the habit of Jesus. He rose up early before day and spent time with his father. Hallelujah. And so, so that's the foundation. Because once you have that as a habit, you're, just like your body did, if you set your body... I'm going to eat every morning at 8 o'clock in the morning breakfast. All of a sudden, you, you know, your body starts saying, I'm hungry <laughs> to God. And I, I'd be in meetings on time with my, my staff sometimes, and they knew me. When 12 o'clock came, I don't care if it was riding me a little board meeting, a, a, a meeting. I would say, look, it's 12 o'clock, it's time for me to eat. That's my habit. They would all say, that's right, you, uh, to Dr. Craig, he's going to eat. That's right. Because I, I knew that was a value to my physical body to make sure I, I, I fed myself properly. And so when it was time to eat, I, I, I did that regardless. And I do it even today. Sometimes, my, sometimes on Monday, my wife always tell me, Pastor, she said, she said, said Alfred, on Monday, I'm off. I ain't going to cook. So you know, years ago, I used to always want to cook. You cook me some food. But I just know on Monday, she said, I'm not going to cook. But, but then that's wonderful. We, we laugh about that all the time. So I said, no problem. So what I do myself, I go in there and give me some cereal, give me some oatmeal or whatever there, because I'm going to eat. I, I need that for my body. And so a lot of times my wife wants something, I try to get her something, or I go to Starbucks, get her some coffee or whatever there in those areas. Because the whole goal is, this is the habit that I have set. Because this is what I, I trust that's necessary for my physical body, are you following me? That I want to eat at a certain time every day. But I, I don't put that same pressure over her. So, but you, you have to, say, I do the same thing with my prayer life, my own consecration life. I have, there are certain things I do as a foundation are you following me? That I feel that are necessary for my spiritual strength to maintain a certain level of anointing on my life. You got to you got to discover the same thing. You can't do what someone else does, but what does it take for you to maintain a certain level of anointing on your life as it pertains to your assignment that you have from God? And then you 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 incorporate that as a value uh, and a priority in your life, and you and you keep that as a foundation, and don't let anything interrupt that. Praise God. Can you, can you see us today? God bless you, Montoya. You're welcome today. Pastor Kimberly, welcome. Praise God. Now, so he says, if, you, if, if any man come, let me in. Open the door. I will come in. I will sup with him. And it says, and he with me. That's fellowship. I will come in and supper with him and he with me. That's prayer and meditation. We call that fellowship. I'm saying prayer and meditation. You talking to God. Meditation, God talking to you. We call that fellowship. Fellowship is not you doing all the talking. Hello, Lord, my name is Jimmy. I take all you give me. Bless me, my four, no more. In Jesus' name, amen. That's not prayer. Are you following me? But it's talking to your dad. Hallelujah. I call it, it's like going into a, an executive meeting with the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, and all the angels. And when you come out of there, it's like I just came out of, a, out of a, a, an executive meeting with the Godhead, glory to God. And I know that I know that I know that I know that I'm empowered by Almighty God today, operating as his, as his representative in the earth, empowered by Him, glory to God, uh, with His love and with His power in my life to be a blessing to His people. You see what I'm talking about? And that's what prayer should give you. Now, so, we think about that. So, prayer then, and we talk about why we should pray. Prayer then, God bless you, Apostle Hines. Welcome, man of God. Uh, uh, so, prayer then, why we should pray, uh, number one, it enriches our life spiritually. Prayer enriches our life spiritually. Amen? Uh, prayer builds us up. It builds us up in the spirit. Prayer also refreshes us. You know, people ask me this many times because I've been passing. I, well, I'm not passing anymore, but I passed for 42 years straight. I'm now full-time. I operate full-time as an apostle now, encouraging other pastors and leaders and things like that in churches. But for 40, oh, this is going to be 44 years that I've been in ministry. And I'm still fired up. I'm still built up. I, 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 I don't have no burnout. You know, I mean, a lot of pastors have burnout. They, they got to go on a six-month sabbatical. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't have no burnout. The reason why I don't, because of my prayer life. You know what I mean? But my prayer life, uh, look in the book of Jude, from the book of Jude, verse, uh, chapter 1 of Jude, verse number 20. And I want you to see that it's so important 
especially your pastors, your ministers, your leaders, and things like that. Everybody gets so stressed out. They say, I gotta take a break. You don't need that kind of break when you understand the power of prayer. That prayer is a refreshing to your spirit man. Are you and then you, you just, you that are not leaders, you're just Christians. You don't, you don't, you don't need to have nothing wrong with a good vacation, nothing wrong with that. But don't take it because of stress. Your stress, your de-stressor is your time you spend in prayer with God. Notice what it says here in Jude, uh, uh, verse, chapter 1, verse number 20. It says this, But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That means as long as I pray in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, I'm going to stay built up. And that word where it says building up yourself is referred to like you charge a battery up. You know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, like it's, it's, it means to charge up yourself like you would a battery. In other words, as long as you keep that battery charged up, you're going to go in there and it's going to start every morning for you. But if you don't keep it charged up, uh, you follow me, then it will literally go dead on. You get up in the morning, all right, all right, and you go click, 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 click. That lets you know pretty your battery not built up. You you need you're stressed now. You need a vacation now. You need you need to you need a sabbatical now. But if you are a person of prayer and you understand the value of prayer and you keep prayer as a part of your life or as your life, it is your strength then you won't experience that burnout on your family in those areas. And that's what happens to pastors. You get so busy, ministers, leaders, you leaders especially, or people that are in business. You can, does anything happen in business? You can get so tied into your business that your prayer life is like just minimized for you. You, try, you, gotta, you gotta try to get around the prayer because now you try to make that thing work in the natural realm on your family. But I'm telling you something, you know, if you keep prayer in its proper perspective, you won't get burned out. You, you, you won't experience, you don't need that, all that stress. Are you following those areas? And I understand that too. I understand that what I'm talking about because I understand stress. I understand as ministry was growing, our ministry was growing. We went from, because see, for, for, for the first 15 years of our ministry, we're the first 20 years of our ministry, I never had over 100 people in my church. So, I mean, some of them were stressful, <laughs> you're following. But I, I can handle that, my own self, 100 people. You know what I mean? I knew all my kids. I knew all the children's name. I knew the youth name. I knew everybody lived and anything like that. I took them on vacations. I took them to Disneyland, SeaWorld, Magic Mountain. I was the pastor. Glory to God. And so that I've been used to for 20 years. But then our church started growing. And when our church started growing, uh, you know, I'm still trying to operate that uh, 200 members, 300 members, 500 members through my, through my natural mind. And it became very stressful for me. We don't like and matter of fact, man, I started having headaches. You know, I'm back of my head started swelling up. It was it was painful, and I didn't know what in the world was going on. I went to the doctor, and my chest started hurting. I feel like I was going to have a heart attack. I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. And uh, and and I went to the doctor, and I had them examine me, and every test kept coming out negative. And then finally, I went to this heart place there, and they said, you, you, "Nothing wrong with your heart." They said it's like a fling that's over your chest cavity created by stress and, and and the only thing that was that would keep that pain off of me would be what they call nitro pills though that pain laughed at tylenol and advil it's a laugh at that it, it didn't bother it didn't, it didn't nothing. the nitro pill don't that take that stress off of me and that pain off of me i came to the conclusion lord i gotta make a decision either i'm gonna grow continue to grow or i'm gonna set 100 members i can handle 100 in my own mind but this 300, 500 now, I'm trying to handle this now, it's stressing me out. I said, Jesus, I'm giving your people back to you. Glory to God. Amen. I mean, Apostle Price told us about that. He said, he said one thing, that you, one luxury you can't have anymore, if you're going to grow, I mean to two to 500 to 1,000 members in your church or in your business, if you're going to grow from a mom and pop business to having multiple businesses, multiple employees, the, the one thing you got to do is you got you to gotta let go of the, of the mom and pop small mentality, you do it all yourself mindset. Uh, you got you, you to gotta, you gotta let go of all that, you follow me? And you got you to understand how to, how to lead your business and your ministry with, out of your spirit, not out of your head. Now, thinking is a part of it, 
but it does not begin there. It begins with the building up of your spirit. Are you following me in those areas? And that's what I'm going to teach you. I'm going to share with you today because that's when I learned that, I was able then to go from 100 members to 200 members to 500 members to 1,000, something about to 1,500 members doing multiple services every morning on Sunday morning. I would do two services in, in West Phoenix, another service in Scottsdale, and I was doing all those services uh, every, every Sunday. Plus, during the week, I was teaching in my MTI ministry school morning and evening. Are uh, you following me? But I had to learn how to keep that stress off of me and learn how to do it. Uh, the message said prayer is the gateway to the supernatural. I began to put, prioritize that prayer and that fellowship with God, not trying to work prayer in, but making it as a priority in my life. Are uh, you following those today? Now, so as we look at that, he says here in Jude verse 1, chapter 1, verse 20, but you, beloved, Talking to you and me, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Not you don't get faith by prayer, but you stir you, you activate your faith. You stir it up through praying in the Holy Ghost. Now you say, Pastor, what then is how do I pray in the Holy Ghost, Pastor? How do I do that? I'm using my word pastor. I'm so used to saying man called pastor, but you say apostle, pastor, praise God, whatever that's morning. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. And let's look at verse number, uh, let's look at verse number two. Verse number two. It says here, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Okay? It says, For no man understands him, how be it in the spirit, in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Uh, uh, um, uh, verse 3, but he that prophesied, speaking unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. And verse 4 says, he that speaketh in the unknown tongue edifies himself. Same Greek word. So how do I edify myself? How do I charge up myself? How do I build up myself? Through praying in tongues. Prayer in tongues is the gateway to the supernatural. And I had to learn the value of praying in the spirit. And, 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 and not starting off in my mind first. Because you start off trying to pray in your mind. Then you, you, you're praying through your intellect. And there's no spiritual value to that. It's a time to do that. No, notice in the book of um, uh, uh, right there in the same uh, chapter. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 14. Let's notice that in our same chapter here. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says this, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, this one says, My spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. See, so when you're praying with your understanding, your spirit is not getting any value out of it. It's a time to do that because that's you talking to God. Are you following? So there's nothing wrong with that. But he said there's a higher level of pray, prayer where you can build yourself up. And do that through praying in tongues. He says, so here, when I pray with my spirit, when I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying in. Now, so I'm getting my spirit built up now. That's how I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, by praying in tongues. You're following that today? And then, he says in verse 15, there, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he says this, what is it then? I will pray, what? With the spirit in tongues, and I will pray with the understanding, what? Also, I will sing with the spirit and I was sing with the understanding also. So can you see the value of that? That as you begin to sing and pray in the spirit, as well as with your understanding, how that the value of your prayer life goes to a whole other level. You follow me in those areas? And so as we look at that then, uh, in prayer, notice in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Romans 8 26, we're talking about prayer, the value of prayer in our lives, why we should pray and things like that, you know, in those areas, it's, it's fellowshiping with God, it's, it's, it's us, you know, uh, uh, asking the call of our Father to come and fellowship with Him, but notice here, again, we're talking about praying in the Spirit now, and, and, and understanding the value of praying in the Spirit, especially when you want to have a supernatural business, or you want to have a supernatural ministry that can go beyond your own intellect. Uh, like I said, I handled a hundred members pretty good. I was very charismatic. You know, I, you know I, I had organizational skills. Very good. But when you want to go beyond that, well, people can still sense God's touch on your life and can still feel like you're hearing from God on their behalf. You've got to have a prayer life. Even with your customers, you know, if you're in a business, 
It's, you know, that prayer life allows you to operate supernaturally even in your business. Are you following me? So notice what Romans chapter 8 verse 26 says. Romans 8 26. God bless you, Mary Ellen. Welcome, welcome, welcome this morning. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 says this. Likewise, we're talking about praying in the Spirit now. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, our weaknesses. For listen now, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself or Himself maketh intercession for us. Isn't that beautiful? With groanings which cannot be uttered. So what's happening here? What's happening here? He says here, the Spirit is there to help our infirmity. In other words, there's a lot of things that go on when you start, like I said, when I was at 100 members, I knew everybody. But when I got to 200 and 500, I needed help. That, that was, my weakness kicked in then. I didn't know how to handle 200, 500 members where I can minister supernatural to them. But the Spirit then was there to help my what? My infirmities. He says then, for we know not what to pray. Notice he didn't say we don't know how to pray. He said we don't know what to pray for. That means there's a lot of times that you got members now, that 200, 500, 1,000 members now, you don't know what to pray for as you are concerning them. Your family members, your children, now that they're grown or, and, or they're doing, they, they've got their age, they're doing their own thing now, you don't know what to pray for no more as you ought. Are you following me? Uh, 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 church members, what they're going through, or people that you got hired, and you know, and and, and then again, the people that's on your staff, and whether it's in your business or whether your church, you don't know what to pray for as you ought. Are you following? Of, of course, there's some natural things. I know that brother so and so got you know uh, uh, got in a car accident last week. I can pray for him. I know sister so and so is having heart surgery this week. I can pray for her. But there's some more things I don't know what to pray for as I ought, as I'm growing and developing. I need to get in through the gate of the supernatural and praying in the spirit. He says then, he says, the spirit then is there now to help me with my infirmities, my weaknesses. When I don't know what to pray for or what, as I ought to pray, he says, the spirit itself for himself will now make intercession. He will go on my behalf, he says, for me with groanings which cannot be uttered, means things I cannot utter and articulate with my speech, with my understanding. He's there then to go before the Father and, and, and use my, my speaking in tongue language to pray about things for which I do not know what to pray for as I ought. Are you following? And so a lot of times that hinders our growth because sometimes the pain of growth in your subconscious mind will hold you back from, even though you be talking about I want to grow in my church, you be talking about I want to grow my business, but the pain of that thing uh, and the stress of it, your subconscious mind will clamp, clamp it down. So you got to make room in your spirit, man, for supernatural growth, for growth beyond your own human intellect. And so that's the, pur that's the purpose of developing a good, strong prayer life. Are you following me? And, and, that, and that'll keep you up. Like I said, I've been going for 40, this will be 44 years, in, 45 years in marriage. Praise God. Oh yeah, thank God for Holy Ghost talking in tongues concerning relationships. Because sometimes your spouse are going through things that you don't know what to pray for concerning them as you ought. You know, and you be saying, is something wrong with you? Nothing, ain't nothing wrong with me. Well, you know something is wrong because they didn't change. Husband didn't change, wife didn't change. But you can go and pray in the spirit concerning that. And you can pray for your husband and your wife when you don't know what to pray for them as you ought. But you can begin to pray in the spirit and before you know it, that thing that got settled. How about your children the same way? I mean, there's a time when you can kind of manage their lives when they're a little baby. But as they start growing to being a teenager, and oh my God, sneaking out, <laughs> you're following doing things that you don't know what to do, how to pray for them as you ought then. You know, you're following me. Of course, you can pray the scriptures, which I prayed over my kids. In the book of Isaiah, all my children shall be taught of God, and grace shall be the peace of my children. Proverbs that says, uh, train a child in the way they should go, and when they're old now depart, I'm going to speak to all my children. I've trained them where they should go, therefore when they're old now depart, 
I'm going to speak on my children. The Bible says the, 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 the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. I'm going to pray to all my children with my understanding. So that's what I can't pray some things with my understanding concerning my children based on the word of God. But there's still some things that, that they're going through that I don't know what to pray for them as I ought. As I ought to pray. So what? how do I do that, Pastor? I'm going to pray over that thing in the spirit. Hallelujah. In the spirit. I'm going to pray in the spirit. I know my son, Alfred Jr., you know, uh, you know, uh, my children, you know, there are certain things when, when they were kids, I didn't, I didn't support that, even though they snuck and did it. Are uh, you following? In other words, I never uh, had my, my children that went to nightclubs as far as what I paid for. They snuck and went to it, but I never supported none of that. Nightclubs, I never bought no secular music for them. Nothing wrong with them, just my, back, back in the day, I didn't do it. But I know this, but I never prevented them to listen to secular music. They still listen to it, but I never paid for it and things like that. So you know, that was just turning the way they should go in those areas. But they still listen to it. So they were going through a lot of changes in their own personal lives. But I, so there's some things they was going through as they were developing as teenagers and then adults. I didn't know what to pray for them as I ought. As I ought to pray. I didn't know as I ought. But I prayed in the Spirit. So one time Alfred said, I said, where are you going today? He said, I'm, oh, I'm going, to, uh, I think I'm going to, uh, to the gym to play basketball. Something he said. And I said, oh, no problem. Okay. I've got what he said. going somewhere. But then uh, uh, later on, uh, uh, we got ready to leave after he left. This young girl, because this one is a teenager, this is a girl called and says, Am I speak to Alfred? I said, This is Alfred, which I was telling you, I'm, my name is Alfred. <laughs> I mean, this is Alfred. You know, I, I, I was, we're, you know we're going to meet here. See, and so the Holy Ghost revealed to me through that little situation where he was headed. So he came back home. I said, I know exactly where you went. How do you know where I went? Well, see, the Holy Ghost arrested that thing, having a young girl call, and I ended up finding where it was going. What I'm saying is, you'd be surprised how when you're praying in the spirit concerning your children, your spouse, your business, the employees, the people that's on your staff, people that's in your department, when, you, when there's things that's going on that's beyond what you know, the Spirit Himself help, will help your infirmity. And go to God with the correct, perfect articulation that when it reaches the Father, it is exactly what it's be. So sometimes, when you understand what I'm saying today, the Spirit of God will come on you and you'll find yourself praying in the Spirit or something for which you know not what to pray for as you ought. But what happens is, him make an intercession and also there's a lifting in your spirit. You say, okay, that's, whatever it was, it's done. It's done. And that's why we need to pray. Amen? And uh, so, uh, tomorrow, I'll pick back up here again tomorrow uh, at the same time. I'm pretty cool. We're going to be talking about prayer uh, uh, in those areas and, and how to spend that time with God and because today, because God's getting ready to move all of us into another area of relationship with Him coming 2020. Well, I'm using that word 2020, but actually it begins now. As, I, as, as He pulled back the, pulls back the curtain of His heart for us. How He wants to fellowship with us as His children. Hallelujah. And we begin to walk in that relationship with Him. Oh my God, get ready for Him to turn us around and unzip us. And step inside of us. Glory to God. Well, we're going to be wall to wall Jesus. Glory to God. Wall to wall Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. It's going to be great. So again, every morning from 6.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Arizona time, 7.30 a.m. Monday through Friday, I'm on teaching the Word of God. And, and I'm going to continue on this right here uh, throughout, uh, throughout the first of the year. So again, I'm looking forward to seeing all you again this, this week. Please, if you, if, you, if you enjoyed this today, like it on Facebook. Go ahead and like it. But also, uh, uh, you can, if you would share this with your friends. That way each week, each day, we'll, we'll grow our audience more and more. So again, thank you so much for being here. God bless you, all of you that have been with us this morning. We're going to come back to tomorrow morning at the exact same time. Until tomorrow at the exact same time. May God's riches and His very best be yours. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.